The Game of Thrones Season 8 trailer arrived yesterday, and just in the few short 12 hours that it's been up, it's received well over 20 million views. In this video, I want to discuss 5 things you may or may not have missed, but regardless, I believe they do need discussing. This video will contain spoilers from potentially leaked, in air quotations there, scenes, so as always, here's your sign and let's begin. Before we get started, please do me a massive favor and slap a like on this video. The like goal is going to be 2,420. Also, make sure you're subscribed and then this is the most important part. Make sure you have your notifications turned on so that way you get alerted every single time I drop a Game of Thrones video to what this long night. Okay, so first things first. The trailer was extremely dark and I think it gets extremely deteriorated in quality when you upload it to YouTube. Through YouTube's video compression system, the quality of the video goes down. So what I've done for this video is actually enhanced it, turned the contrast up by 5, and adjusted the brightness by like plus 20. This should help us get a clear image to what exactly is going on in some of these more darker scenes from the trailer. Okay, so the first scene I want to discuss was actually my favorite moment of the trailer, and that was the dragons flying through the sky. We get one quick shot of them flying in what appears to be a heavily wooded background, and then we get another shot of them flying in what appears to be a location north of the wall. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be north of the wall, it's just these cliffs and that glacier or this crevice or whatever looks very similar to beyond the wall from last season. What I wanted to bring to your attention was the fact that when you freeze frame it and pause it then zoom in a little bit, you can actually see a black dot. And then when you put it in super slow-mo, that black dot stays on the back of Rhaegal all the way throughout this scene. Now if you notice, Drogon is in front and he's already a black dragon so you can't really notice the black spot on him. His reddish hue sort of distorts that a little bit. But the main reason why I wanted to point this out is there are several moments in the trailer, some of them I'm going to discuss in this video, where things just don't really add up and it just seems like it's kind of blacked out. In my opinion, this is a case of Thor's eye. Do you guys remember when Thor Ragnarok came out and his eye was CGI rendered in for the trailer? And then when you watch the movie, he's clearly missing an eye at that point. Disney, Star Wars, and even HBO themselves have sort of made this game famous. You can you can digitally remove stuff from the trailer to get rid of the really spoilery bits. And in my opinion, this black spot on the back of Rhaegal is actually Jon Snow riding him. This is a scene in which Jon Snow will learn how to ride a dragon. HBO did this for the Game of Thrones Season 6 trailer with Jon Snow when we got the glimpses of the Battle of Bastards. Everybody swore we saw Jon Snow riding a source in the background somewhere. And you know what? We did. When you went back and watched the actual scene that aired on screen in season 6 and then the trailer, you could tell that they clearly blurred his face just enough so that he'd be unrecognizable to those with untrained eyes. And you know what? To be honest, I didn't notice this at all until I enhanced the video. So yeah, like I said earlier, the video quality does get downgraded a little bit when you upload it to YouTube, but I think they intentionally made this trailer a bit lower resolution and a bit darker so that it's harder to make certain things out, i.e. when they CGI remove Jon Snow off the back of Rhaegal. Now, I know I'm really running with this, but I'll be the first person to admit it if I'm wrong. When you add everything up, it just doesn't make sense. We've had numerous shots of the dragons arriving in the north. They didn't need to show them flying in a wintry backdrop. We get it. We've seen that. That was one of the first promos that they released for this season. You all let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Now, next up is the very first scene of the actual trailer. It starts out with Arya running down a hallway from something that's in entirely blacked out. We can't tell what it is. I assumed, personally, that it was the Army of the Dead. Arya was a little bit too out of breath and a little bit too wounded for it to be anything other than the Army of the Dead. She could take on a group of probably five soldiers and wipe them out. I saw a few folks in my comment section speculating that Arya was actually in King's Landing running from something, and in my opinion, that's not necessarily the case. If you look at the stonework in the background, it does appear a little bit light sandy colored like the buildings in King's Landing, but that's just because there's a torch right next to the wall, and that's where everyone's eyes sort of focused on. Another interesting thing that people pointed out about this scene is that it appears to be a giant blob, like a black aura or something that Arya is running from. And in my opinion, this is like what I mentioned earlier. This is something that's been CGI removed. Now, when I enhance the video, and like you're seeing right now, it does sort of look like a shadow baby. Like the things that crawl out of Melisandre's vagina. But then my brain started working again, and I was like, nope, you're getting a little bit too tinfoil -y there. Why would Melisandre send a shadow baby? And as of what we know so far, she's the only person capable of doing something like this. Obviously, there are other shadow binders, but in the TV show, she's the only one that could do this. Why would she send it after Arya when she's on Jon Snow's side? That's when it occurred to me. This is most likely Arya running from a white of someone from her family, someone close to her. Maybe not necessarily her family, but someone who she's befriended that has now been turned into a white and is most likely chasing her down the hallway. Maybe, and I really don't want to say this because there is a strong possibility that this could be the case, this is Nymeria. I actually received a leak 
a few weeks ago through the DMs over on Twitter, speaking of which, make sure you go follow me at Sir underscore Hunts, but this person stated that after John and Daenerys arrive in Winterfell, the crap really hits the fan, and once the army of the dead attacks, everyone is unprepared and they're forced to escape the only way they can. And when this happens, Arya sets out on her own and she encounters a white version of Nymeria. Now, I don't think that may be going down in this scene. In fact, I hope that's not what going what's going down in this scene. And it does appear that whatever's chasing Arya does seem a little bit taller. So maybe it's not a dire wolf, but then wait, no, Nymeria's freaking huge. We saw Arya standing in front of her. She towers over her. So if this is Nymeria chasing her, the height is about right. It could also be someone close to her, and this is why Arya is so distraught. Maybe she thought the person was who they normally are. She goes to grab them, and then they turn around and attack her, catching her off guard and making her run. I don't know. You all let me know what you think down below in the comment section. I feel like Dan and Dave's attitude this uh, season and when it comes to death is going to be sacrifice the few for the many, meaning sacrifice Nymeria in order for Ghost and maybe one of the dragons to survive. Nymeria's death would further the story and raise the stakes. The next thing that I want to discuss is something that I'm not going to spend nearly as much time on because I addressed it in my video, but I did see a lot of comments and questions about it, and that's because anything involving Cersei we know is going to be in game, so a lot of people were paying extra close attention to the scene in the trailer. This one's kind of like a double whammy. Right before Cersei is shown about to shed on the world's largest tear while she glimpses or grasps her club. I can't even speak right. That's how excited I am from this trailer. There's a moment right before Cersei drinks her from her cup of wine and she's about to cry where we see someone meeting with her in front of the throne. A lot of people were, you know, sort of hinting at the fact that maybe that's Sansa. Well, I've zoomed in, enhanced, brightened, done my little magic trick, and you can clearly see that this is Euron. I will admit that the top of his head does look a little bit brownish and reddish, and that would give us the illusion of Sansa. Also, there's a long black coat, and a lot of people could confuse that with Sansa's darker gowns that she wears. Here's the thing. Euron has a coat just like that and it's baggy. A quick side note, there was a leak that I was sent a while back and it mentioned a scenario in which Sansa gets kidnapped and these images that we have of Cersei meeting with Jon Snow is actually sort of a trade-off. Jon Snow turning himself in in order to get Sansa safely back to Winterfell. Jon Snow is supposedly said to bend the knee in these moments. So in conclusion, I do think that Euron is meeting with Cersei. The other thing that I wanted to talk about was the fact that we've all known since before Season 7 even ended. There was a leak that came out in August of 2017 mentioning major plot points for Game of Thrones Season 8. One of those major plot points included Cersei having a miscarriage. Now, it has been confirmed by Dan and Dave that Cersei is in fact pregnant. She wouldn't have done what she did while she was alone last season if she was not in fact pregnant. Now, the moment in this trailer where Cersei is crying and while she's drinking the wine, people chalk that up to she must have found out she had a miscarriage, otherwise she wouldn't be drinking the wine. And to that I say I do agree with the fact that maybe she's found out that she had a miscarriage or she lost the baby and this is why she's so upset. There's also a possibility that she could be crying over the loss of Jamie. but also this is medieval times or it's supposed to be be set around that era. So I don't know if they related alcohol while you're pregnant is bad for the baby. In my opinion, there's only one or maybe three things that could be potentially happening in this scene. One is that she did find out that she had a miscarriage. The second possibility is that she found out about Jamie's death. And then the third possibility is that Daenerys is closing in on her. We do know that she stands no chance against them in the very end. Even though she has the Golden Company coming over, Cersei's slowly been cutting off bridges and backing herself into a corner. Once Daenerys and Jon Snow make that final strike, Cersei stands no chance. She could be realizing that in these moments. However, I do think it's one of the first two options because most of these clips in this trailer are from the first three episodes. Next up, the last thing that I want to to talk about from the trailer in this video is who is John's statue standing in front of when he's down in the crypts of Winterfell and Daenerys walks up to him. John does have a pretty angry look on his face. Like I said in my video from earlier, I do think that John is standing in front of his mother's statue, his newly found mother. The only thing that really makes sense when you look at the context clues, how Daenerys walks up and sort of looks at John longingly and John realizes and senses that she's next to him. He just sort of closes his eyes like he's just not only pissed off but also severely disappointed. In my opinion, when you add all those things together, John just found out about his lineage. He's not only disappointed in Ned for lying to him his whole life, but he's also sad that he's not going to be able to find happiness. The one thing that was probably making John move forward, other than trying to save the world, of course, the one thing that he was looking forward to the most is probably settling down with Daenerys, finally starting a family. He's paid his debt to society ten times over. The fact that Jon Snow just found out his lineage and that his one true love is actually his aunt, this has got to be his worst day ever. And in my opinion, 
opinion, all those things that I just listed perfectly explain why Jon Snow has this reaction in this scene from the Game of Thrones Season 8 trailer. It's kind of hard to figure out which statue he's exactly in front of because they do manipulate stuff down in the crypts. It's always really dark and dim down there, and a lot of people were saying that they thought that Lyanna's statue was next to Ned's. Well, there could be some sort of situation in which the crypts have been switched up, and this actually is Lyanna's statue. You all let me know what you think down below. Whose statue is Jon Snow standing in front of? And you know what? We're actually doing pretty well on time, so I'm going to add in one more thing. This is the sixth thing that I think you may or may not have missed. Either way, it needs some more discussion. Is There's a scene in the trailer where Jamie is yelling, and then it's a quick cut, and then we see someone fighting in the flames. It appears as though Jamie just yelled towards that person. I initially thought that, hey, that's Jamie. They just, you know, sort of mixed the fight scenes together. But on closer inspection, this person is swinging their sword with their right hand. Jamie had that removed about four seasons ago, so this can't be him. Another option, and this is something that Elite suggested, so beware, there's a scene during the Battle of Winterfell in which Brienne and Jamie are overcome by whites. The two of them sort of get surrounded on all sides and then separated, and then once they make their way back to each other, Brienne can be seen standing alone. Everything starts to move in slow motion, and as she turns around, her eyes are glowing bright blue, and she actually has a part of her face ripped off. Jamie and Brienne then begin to duel one last time, and the scene ends with Jamie laying Brienne to rest. If you want to know more about this leak, check the link down below in the description, or go to my video page and look for the one with Brienne and Jamie in the thumbnail. I released the video last month, so it shouldn't be too far down. Now, like I mentioned from my trailer breakdown video from earlier, I do plan on going through every single scene again and comparing them with every single leak that I've been sent. Problem is, I've been sent well over 100 leaks, so it's kind of hard to sort through all that. That video will be out later on this week. But in the meantime, between time, I hope you enjoyed this video as sort of an appetite suppressor. All right, and with that being said, I want to thank you all so, so much for watching. If you could, please slap a like on this video as the like goal is going to be 2,420. Also, make sure you're subscribed and then make sure you have notifications turned on so that way you get alerted every single time I drop a Game of Thrones video throughout this long night. Super special shout out to every single person watching this video and a super special thank you to every single member of my Patreon family over on patreon.com slash Sir Reviews. I want to thank you all again so, so much for watching. My name is Mark and this has been Sir Hunts Reviews.